Hi, welcome back. I'm Gabby Triana. Today I thought I'd show you how to make two yummy treats inspired by one of my favorite Halloween short stories, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. Because this short story features the Headless Horseman, I'm going to be showing you how to make Heads Will Roll, Apple Cider, and Creepy Pizza Skulls. What I love about The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is that it's not even really about the Headless Horseman at all. It's about a school teacher, Ichabod Crane, from Connecticut, who comes to New York, passes through the town of Sleepy Hollow, and gets a job as a teacher. And he quickly falls in love with the rich farmer's daughter, Katrina Van Tassel, who is already betrothed to local town hero Brom Bones. And what happens next is a love triangle. He fights for her affection, Brom Bones fights back, tries to get rid of Ichabod, invites him to a Halloween party, and it isn't until the very end that we get an appearance by the Headless Horseman. So after the Halloween party, Ichabod has to ride through a haunted forest in order to get back to the schoolhouse where he's living, and he comes face to face with the Headless Horseman. Severed heads is the theme of this party. Whether you're having a small get-together or you're just hanging out with the family, you'll love this creepy twist on a classic favorite, apple cider and pizza. Here I am in my kitchen, so let's get started. For the heads will roll apple cider, you're going to need a quarter teaspoon, an apple peeler, a paring knife, a serrated knife, two or three cinnamon sticks, anise pods, cloves, an orange, four medium or large apples, and a gallon of your favorite apple cider. Begin by preheating your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, peel four medium to large size apples. You can use small apples, but keep in mind they're gonna dry and shrink in the oven. So I went with a regular to large size apple. Next, cut off two sides on each apple for a total of eight faces. Using the quarter teaspoon, scoop out two eyes on the rounded part of the apple. This is important. If you carve on the flat side that goes down on the baking sheet like I did the first time by accident, you get this. Not quite the result we want. So yeah, rounded part of the apple. Using the paring knife, carve a nose, mouth, and any other details you like, like scars or teeth, into each face. This is the fun part, so be as creative as you want. Give an aluminum lined baking sheet a quick shot of baking spray. Place the eight faces flat side down, faces up, and pop them into the oven. Bake for about two hours. The apples should be dry and a little shriveled but not cooked through. The features you carved out should be nice and prominent. While they're baking, set a burner to medium high. Fill a large pot with one to one and a half gallons of your favorite store-bought apple cider. Throw in three to five whole cloves, three cinnamon sticks. Make sure you get these from the grocery store, not a craft store, since craft store cinnamon sticks have fake scents and sealants on them and about three to four anise star pods. Add all the spices. I added a few slices of orange because I love orange and clove, but you can leave that out. You can leave out any of the spices for that matter if you don't like the taste, though the finished product won't look as pretty. Bring the apple cider to a light boil, then lower the temperature to medium low let the flavors infuse there for about 20 minutes. 
two hours later. After two hours, take the apple faces out of the oven and set on a towel. It's okay, they won't be too hot. Transfer the faces onto a wire cooling rack. Okay, now comes the fun part. Place the severed head apple faces into the apple cider and watch them float. We added a little bit of dry ice for that fun foggy effect. Now for the pizza skulls, you're gonna need a Nordic Wear heavy aluminum pan. Give it a shot of cooking spray. You'll need one refrigerated tube of pizza dough, your favorite pizza sauce, a little bit of all-purpose flour, some mozzarella cheese, some pepperoni, any shape or size, and a pizza wheel. Begin by dusting your work surface with some flour. Dump out your pizza dough onto it and roll it open into a rectangle. Using the cutting wheel, cut into six even pieces. Take one square and lay it onto the skull opening. Using a spoon, put about two tablespoons of sauce into the dough, followed by some cheese, pepperoni, then more sauce or more cheese. I don't have measurements for this. Just put however much you want, one teaspoon at a time. Don't overfill it or you won't be able to close the dough. After you finish one, pinch the dough closed. There's no magical way to do this and your fingers will get messy. Just try to get them closed without everything coming out. Push it down a little so the dough pushes against the skull design and repeat with the next five pizza skulls. Ready for the oven. Oh yeah. Twenty minutes later. Pull them out of the oven and let them cool on a cooling rack until you can handle them. Pop them out and that's it. Well, you might have a little trouble popping them out. Serve and have fun pulling their mouths open, watching the cheese pull away and the sauce look like blood in its mouth. <laughs> Yummy. So there you have it. I'm gonna post both recipes in the video description. And if you like this video, guys, please comment, like, and subscribe. And guys, next time you're riding home from that Halloween party, watch your head and look out for the Headless Horseman. Happy Halloween.